George the Frog Prince, A Leap of Faith, written by Jen Saunders. George was no ordinary frog. He didn't dream of juicy flies or long naps on lily pads. George dreamed of grand balls and sparkling crowns. He dreamed of being a prince. The other frogs chuckled. A prince? croaked Bartholomew, shaking his head. Frogs belong in the mud, not in a palace, George tried to explain. But fairy tales say a princess's kiss can change a frog into a prince, he insisted. Bartholomew scoffed. Fairy tales are for tadpoles, he said, hopping away. George sighed, nobody understood. He hopped onto a lily pad, feeling lonely but determined. He knew what he wanted. He wanted to be a prince, and he wouldn't let anyone tell him otherwise. Life in the muck wasn't easy for a frog with grand aspirations. The other frogs teased him relentlessly. Look, it's Prince George, they'd croak laughing. But George never let their mockery dampen his spirit. He always offered a helping hand, or rather, a helping webbed foot. One day, a little ladybug struggled to push a crumb twice her size. George, without hesitation, hopped over and helped her push it to her home. Another time, a group of tadpoles lost their way in the reeds. George, though busy daydreaming, guided them back to their parents. Word of George's kindness spread through the pond. Even the grumpy catfish, known for his bad temper, had something nice to say about him. Little did George know his kindness did not go unnoticed. A pair of sparkling eyes watched him from the heart of a forget-me-not flower. The eyes belonged to a tiny fairy, no bigger than George's thumb. She had gossamer wings and a dress made of woven moonlight. She had been observing George for weeks, her heart touched by his unwavering kindness. Such a pure heart, she whispered, in a creature so small. One evening as George sat by the pond, singing a wistful tune about princes and princesses, the fairy revealed herself. George gasped, his eyes wide with wonder. He had never seen anything so beautiful. Don't be afraid, little frog, the fairy said, her voice like the tinkling of bells. I am Flora, and I have seen your kindness, your unwavering spirit. George could only stare, his heart thumping like a drum in his chest. You dream of being a prince, Flora continued, and your kindness has earned you a chance. Flora raised her tiny hand, and a beam of golden light enveloped George. He felt a strange tingling sensation, like a thousand butterfly wings fluttering against his skin. His legs stretched, his webbed feet transforming into elegant hands. His slimy green skin became smooth and fair. When the light faded, George was no longer a frog. He was a handsome young prince, with kind eyes and a gentle smile. He was wearing a velvet tunic and breeches fit for royalty. George looked down at his hands, then at his reflection in the pond. He could hardly believe his eyes. It was a dream come true, but it felt even more magical than he ever imagined. Thank you, he whispered, his voice now a melodious baritone. Flora smiled. Your heart, George, was always that of a prince. George, now a true prince, stood tall and proud. However, his transformation didn't erase his humble beginnings or the lessons he'd learned. He knew true beauty resided not in appearances but in one's character. He vowed to spread kindness and compassion throughout the land. He bowed to Flora. But what about the princess? he asked, remembering the fairy tales. Flora chuckled, her tiny wings fluttering. The princess is not something you find, dear George, but something you earn. She explained that a true princess, worthy of his kind heart, wouldn't be swayed by titles or riches. She would value the goodness within. With a final sprinkle of fairy dust and a gentle nudge towards the nearby kingdom, Flora disappeared. George, filled with a mix of excitement and nervousness, set off on his new adventure, ready to prove his worth beyond his princely appearance. The world outside the pond seemed vast and daunting, but George faced it with the same unwavering spirit he'd always possessed. He quickly learned that being a prince wasn't just about fancy clothes and grand balls. It was about helping those in need, being brave in the face of adversity, 
and always choosing kindness. He assisted farmers with their harvests, using his newfound strength to carry heavy loads. He comforted weeping children who had lost their toys, his gentle words bringing smiles back to their faces. He even rescued a kitten stuck in a tree, earning the admiration of the townsfolk. His actions spoke louder than any royal decree. He wasn't just Prince George, he was Prince George, the kind, the brave, the compassionate. Yet amidst all his good deeds, he couldn't shake off the feeling that something was missing. News of Prince George's kindness reached the ears of Princess Isabella, a girl known for her sharp wit and even sharper tongue. She was beautiful, with flowing golden hair and eyes like sapphires. But she had grown weary of suitors who only cared for her title. She decided to test this kind prince herself, disguised as a peasant girl. One day, as George walked through the market square, Isabella, in her disguise, purposely bumped into him, sending a basket of apples tumbling to the ground. Oh dear, I'm so sorry, she cried, pretending to be distressed. Many princes would have scoffed or called for their guards, but not George. He immediately knelt down and began helping her gather the scattered fruit. Don't worry, it's no trouble at all, he said with a reassuring smile his princely attire now stained with dirt. Isabella, observing his genuine concern, felt a warmth spread through her. Could this prince, so humble and kind, be different from the rest? As they gathered the apples, Isabella, still in disguise, peppered George with questions, testing his character. She was amazed by his thoughtful answers, his genuine desire to help others. He spoke of his past as a frog, not with shame but with pride, for it had taught him the true meaning of kindness. He didn't realize he was speaking to the princess he'd been searching for, but Isabella saw past the disguise right through to his kind heart. She knew then and there that this was no ordinary prince. This was a prince worthy of her love. With a mischievous glint in her eye, Isabella revealed her true identity. George was taken aback, but Isabella simply smiled and said, A prince who picks up apples for a peasant girl is a prince worth knowing. George, his heart overflowing, knew he had found something truly special. News of Prince George and Princess Isabella's love story spread throughout the land. It became a tale whispered by the wind, a testament to the power of kindness. George, the once mocked frog, proved that true transformation stemmed not from magic, but from within. His journey taught everyone that humility and compassion could conquer even the most cynical hearts. And so, the frog who dreamed of being a prince lived happily ever after, not just because of a fairy's blessing, but because of the kindness he carried within him. His story became a beacon of hope, reminding everyone that even the smallest creature could achieve greatness with a pure heart and a generous spirit. The End Lots of love, Jenna Saunders.